This is the Honey Shine or Honey Brandy, whatever you want to call it, I made about two months ago. I'm going to do a few things in this video. Number one is I want to catch you up with what these things are tasting like. Uh, and number two, I kind of want to talk about what those results mean for the future. How's it going Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. This is Stillet and I'm Jesse. These are the, uh, the two versions of the Honey Shine I made a little while ago. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, that's cool. You can go and check the video out up here. It honestly was a very cool project, one that I really, really enjoyed. So if you haven't seen it, go and watch that first and then come back here. Uh, in terms of what's happened since that video, not a whole lot to get you caught up on. Uh, the oaked version has sat with oak in it for pretty much exactly two months now. Uh, I have opened this up probably five or six times to let a little bit of air in there, giving it a shake every now and again. This one, I have opened it, I think, twice, just to smell it and taste it along the way, uh, but nothing else has happened with that. So, uh, the first thing I want to do is just taste these things. That is, in some ways, probably the least interesting part of this video. Uh, so, let's get stuck right into it, because uh, once you know what this stuff tastes like, we can talk about ideas that this gives me for the future, basically. Let's hit the unaged version first. So on the nose, I do get honey. Yeah, a decent amount of honey. It's relatively one dimensional. I'm not getting so much of the floral side of things, but I'm getting lots of the deep, um, like to me, what you actually think of when you think of honey, that honey sweetness, and a little bit more than that as well. So a little bit more towards the grungy, when I say grungy, I mean, like darker caramel and molasses sort of flavors. A little bit of that, not much. The palette is interesting. Right away, the first thing I get is alcohol. Bang. Kind of like a, a half decent vodka. That then gets cleared away with the honey flavors. And there's a little bit more of the floral, um, almost like light herbal side of things, but not a lot. The honey sweetness comes in and then a touch of the darker stuff, and it all gets scrubbed off by vodka flavor on the mouth, basically. This is why I want to taste this one next to it. On the nose, there is more of the floral and more of the herby straight away. The deeper, darker stuff seems to melt kind of into the woody side of things a little bit, so that's a little bit more muddled up and less obvious that it's straight honey, uh, but it is a more complex aroma. That's where it gets interesting. That initial vodka hit is still there, but it's muted down a lot. And that lets the floral, herby, bright, it just feels like spring. <laughs> it lets that side of the honey shine through more. Yeah, it's taken away probably about 60% of the, the vodka shininess at the end, which allows the, the darker honey flavors, the caramel, the, the honey sweetness, to linger and sit on your tongue, almost it feels more weighty and you just don't feel like your tongue has been stripped off. So there were a couple of people on the original video that basically said, dude, what the hell is the obsession with putting burnt wood in everything? Why not just leave it <laughs> alone for once? And I get you, I feel you. Um, there's a couple of reasons for this. One is because I just love whiskey, man. I'm biased towards it. So I'm probably gonna lean towards treating shit like whiskey more than I don't. Uh, but two, we are, a bunch of skill and knowledge hunters, gatherers, collectors. That's what we do. Well, that's what I do anyway, and I think that's why a lot of you guys are around here as well. So doing stuff like this is interesting. Now, on that note, can we make this taste more like that by basically seasoning it like the wood has seasoned this? Uh, and to try that, I have some simple syrup made up with uh, some leftover honey. Exactly the same honey that was used in this. So let's uh, dose it with that and see if that gets us the same result, shall we? Speaking of skill and knowledge gathering, it's time to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of educational videos made by people that are actually practicing what they teach. You can learn a new skill or hone one you've been developing for a while, perhaps like me, you just need a little bit of a kick in the pants to get onto something you've been thinking about for a while. 
For me, that is working out how to delegate parts of the video making process so I can just focus on what it is that I'm actually good at and create more content for you guys. So I've been watching Productivity for Creatives by Thomas Frank and I have to say it is really, really nice to be actively inspired about improving things, going the next step rather than just this horrible ever long feeling of just getting by. <laughs> Skillshare is a premium service, which means there's no ads to distract you from your learning. So use the link in the description down below. The first 1,000 people that do will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. You can cram a lot of learning into one month. So here's the interesting thing, guys. Adding that honey, adding the original honey into this has done not a lot for the flavor. It doesn't make it taste more like the honey. Maybe, maybe, a, maybe a smidge. Uh, what it does do is remove some of that vodka-ness at the end of the, the palette. So in the same way that uh, glycerin would kind of clean up a, a vodka or a whatever you put it in. On the finish, it's kind of doing the same thing. It is adding more sweetness to it, obviously, but that doesn't, um, it's not, at least for me, it's not perceived in the same way as the sweetness from this. And the, the thing that blows my mind about this entire experiment is that this, this to some degree, but definitely this, in some ways, tastes more like honey. It tastes more like this honey than this honey does. How is that possible? <laughs> so obviously, mm, sorry, that was a large mouthful of honey. <laughs> obviously the honey has honey sweetness that these don't. Obviously it has a mouthfeel that these don't. But the joy, the amazing thing, the beauty of that honey to me is this kind of almost like duality that it has going on. It's got this light floral spring like herby like fresh wildflowers and stuff like walking through a, an awesome field. It's got that kind of aspect going on to it but it also has this really interesting deep honey sweetness that borderlines on caramel molasses and, and pushes into those darker flavors. The honey has that, but it's almost, it's almost disguised by just how freaking sweet it is, like how sugary it is. This seems to magnify those, both of those things that I love about it without having this crazy sweetness. It's really, really interesting. I'll be honest with you guys, this is not an entirely finished product. I am talking specifically about all the good qualities it has. The downside is that it still has this slightly rough vodka finish to it. Hold on, let me... <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of... Whiskey's made with a lot of sugar. And it's not, a, it's not a horrible thing. It's not shocking. It's not something that would make me not make this again. None of those things. But I'm, I'm just letting you know that, that for real, that's what it's like. The other thing to keep in mind here, guys, is that unless you have access to basically free honey, if you've got hives yourself or you know, you know someone who's got hives, this is insanely freaking expensive to do. Another thing to note too, guys, is that obviously the type of honey you use is going to make this vary insanely. And I, I don't understand honey well enough to explain that to you. All I know is that honey has a huge gamut of flavors. So there is a, a huge wide world out there of flavors we can pick from. So let's put all these things together and consider what it means for uh, potentially using this in the future. Number one, the intense amount of flavor carry over that I've got from the original honey into this product, more than anything else I've ever distilled, this tastes like the essence of the raw ingredient. Uh, number two, the flavor gamut that we've got that we could play with and explore that I don't understand. Please tell me in the, in the comment section down below what you think would be fun for honey. Uh, number three, the kind of weird uh, sugar shine finish. Uh, and number four, just the intense expense of this stuff. I'm interested to hear what you guys think. And when I make videos like this, I make it knowing that it's not gonna be a super popular video. I make this video knowing that this is for the people that watch the channel regularly, that are at home experimenting themselves, that are up to their eyeballs in this shit. Uh, and they, you know, it, it, it's a way for us to, us to have something special for the core crew. <laughs> and also for a way for bumping up creativity for both of us, right? So if you've got suggestions, drop them down below. But here's my thoughts. I don't think I would ever make another honey shine straight up by itself, unless unless I had access to free honey. And then sure, whatever, I'd, I'd experiment with it. That would be fun. For me, I think I would use honey almost like a cask finish. And once again, yes, I'm talking whiskey, but you could apply it to anything else you make as well, right? So make another spirit 
and then pick a honey that you think the flavors are going to augment that final spirit. The absolute classic is single malt whiskey and sherry. They just go together, the, the, the flavors work, and you don't need a giant amount of sherry to really boost the overall enjoyment or the perception or the, the, the change in the single malt. You just need a little bit. And I feel like it could be the same with honey. These flavors that I'm getting out of this, I'm excited to put these with peat. I wanna know what that's like. <laughs> and because we as home distillers are not reined in by having to meet definitions of things, I can make a single malt peated whiskey with honey in it and it's just for me. No one can tell me that I'm not allowed to do that and call it single malt, because well, it's not whatever. Like I don't really care if it's actually single malt. I care about what it tastes like. <laughs> so the idea of having these floral, herbal, light, almost effervescent flavors that are drifting over the top of a deep, dark, grungy, peaty, like funky whiskey with a honey sweetness running underneath it as well. Mmm, that starts to get me excited. So I don't know. That's my thoughts on what I'm gonna be using honey for in the future. What are you gonna use it for? I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, Patreons, for letting me do this sort of stuff, the core group uh, that are up to your eyeballs and this stuff. So thank you for letting me do it. All right, guys, uh, this has kind of got me excited to experiment in the future. <laughs> like I keep saying, let me know what you're gonna experiment with. I know I don't get to reply to all of your comments anymore. There's just there's just too much going on in the whole ecosystem of, of Still It for me to be able to reply to everyone. But trust me, I do read pretty much every single comment. And even though you may not get a reply to it, they really do sort of impact what I do in the future. So thank you for that, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Thumbs up, subscribe, comment. I'll catch you next time, guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.